Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. My name is Lucian G Kaiser and today we're going to be unboxing the brand new Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory M9 Gernsback version 4 from Full Metal Panic. And this arm slave is one that I have been waiting to get a model kit of for a very long time. They've had other model kits of this released by other companies before, but this guy comes from Bandai, and I'm very much looking forward to see what mechanics they can put into such a perfect kit like this. So this one is a 160 scale kit, and the reason for it being 160, but having the box the size of basically a 1 1 is because the arm slaves are not as big or as tall as most Gundam figure or model kits, I should say, and Gundam mobile suits themselves in general. So now we're going to take a quick look at the box here. So you can see some very nice pictures of the weapons and gimmicks. And then of course it comes with the, of course, the blade and the knife, the anti-tank dagger, and then the larger mono molecular, oh, sorry, mono molecular cutter. And then of course the 40 millimeter assault rifle. And this is the basic model of the one that is used by the group mithril as you can see here it's got the mithril symbol and the image of the rear and front there's also of course an arbalist version and then we have the melissa mal version i have that one also ordered uh, that one will be delivered on wednesday so i'll be doing an unboxing for that one to show the difference between the two arm slaves but this one is mostly um used by their armed forces and in in this case this particular model that comes with this sniper rifle which is modeled almost after the style of anti-tank sniper rifles um is piloted by our good old friend kurtz weber so let's go ahead and pop this guy open love that cover art put that to the side there we're going to take a look at the runners here yeah, pull out my old handy dandy hobby knife. Quick little cut there. And let's go ahead and take a look. So this is the first set of runners. This is the E-runners. And it's molded in, it looks like multiple colors, which is good. I love that. All right, and let's go on to the B-runners here. Same color as the E. We got B and F here. All right, and now we get into the darker colored runners. It's mostly for the weapons, it looks like, and then one more runner in the color of the previous ones. So there we have the sniper rifle, which in the latest episode of Full Metal Panic, man, Kurtz puts this thing to good use. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely watch all the seasons of it. All of them are great in their own ways, but this new season is just intense beyond words. And then of course, we've got some more parts of the main body, including the head pieces here for the main and then of course the shoulder pieces right there and the chest piece so get those guys to the side go ahead and move on to the next set of looks like this is the rest of the other rifle batch yep so there's the 40 millimeter rifle we got the blades now i'm a little disappointed because it looks like the blades are just molded in one single color so looks like I better bust out my metallic silver paint and the same thing for the hands the fingers and the show are actually a different molded color than the palms so that's gonna be a little painting there too but that's all right I can make do with that that's not too big of a deal got the poly caps here all right and let's go ahead and move on to the next set of runners that runner A and its partner in this bag. All 
Alright, so runner A and another runner A. Kind of interesting. They usually do an A1 and an A2 for most of the Bandai kits, so kind of nifty that they decided to just do straight A. It's probably because the parts are just matching for the same, so there's no real difference between them that requires the extra designation. Alright, and the final runner. Oh, good. Minimal stickers. Uh, it's both an upside and a downside. I was hoping it would come with uh, some decals to kind of personalize the arm slave with like, you know, personal ID number, caution, warning, things like that. But I can see you've got the green one that will be for the visor and then a few other ones for some mechanical detail and the yellow ones. And then the last two runners, runner C and runner C again. So identical pieces for both ones. Let's see the difference between them. All right, and then let's get to the final goodie in the box here. Go ahead and pull out our arm slave manual. So, and I uh, love it because they call it an arm slave recognition guide. <laughs> Because it's interesting, in the world of Full Metal Panic, they actually have a Jane's Recognition Guide for arm slaves. Because they are a primary fighting vehicle throughout most of the military forces in the world. So, here we have the weapon construction. So, it looks like this is the standard kind of 1144 style instruction book where it has a couple of color pages. But, the majority of the pages for the actual assembly are actually in black and white. And surprisingly enough, there's actually only a few pages of assembly. So it looks like the assembly for this guy will be uh, pretty simple. Nothing too complicated. Probably a good afternoon's worth of work. And then, of course, we have a weapons guide. Oh, and very nice. The, there's an English translation right underneath the Japanese. So if you're ever interested in the technical details, which I definitely will be, because this guy is definitely going to be in my lore mechanics videos here. So we're we'll talking about the lore and mostly both the mechanics and how well this kit replicates those mechanics from the actual show itself. So definitely check that out. It's basically my series of videos that I'll be doing. The majority of them will be on Gundams, but they'll also have a separate one. It's gonna be the Build Mechanics series. So there's already a Gundam Build Mechanics video for the Gundam Thunderbolt as one of my first ones so we're gonna put these guys back in here because I have a very long backlist of kits that I need to get through and unfortunately this guy is gonna be at the back of that particular list but don't you worry I'll be making sure that he gets a good review very soon but again, I am very much looking forward to putting this together and seeing how well it does. Now, for my next video though, I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek. I just finished assembling and detailing this guy, my Master Grade Tall Geese. So he will be on my next Gundam Build Mechanics video. We'll be talking about the mobile suit itself in the actual anime, what it can do, and also comparing the, uh, of course, model kit for the Master Grade to see how well it manages to replicate all those details. I've just got to finish putting the decals on this guy, do a little touch-up work, give him a nice top coat. But so far, this kit has just been fantastic, and I can't wait to show you guys just the awesome level of detail that Bandai really put into this Master Grade and it is truly worthy of the Lightning Count Zex Marquis. So again, my name is Lucian G. Kaiser. I want to thank you again for joining us here in the G. Kaiser age. Please like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when the next Build Mechanics video comes out. Again, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Lucian G. Kaiser, signing out.